Hello and welcome. My name is Sunshine Amos, the CEO and Project Manager, Sunshine Resources. In this video, I will show you how to make hair shampoo at home. But before we go into the production proper, let me take you through the safety precautions you will take as you do this production. So let's go through the precautions. Do not make this preparation near naked flames or fire. Avoid direct contact of chemicals with the skin or eyes. Keep all chemicals out of reach of children and do not taste any chemical. Please ensure that you keep to these instructions to avoid any hazard. I will now go through the list of chemicals in the order in which we dissolve them in water. The first one in the list is called nitrosol. The second one is called soda ash. The third chemical you're going to add to the solution is called sulfonic acid. And the fourth chemical is called foaming booster. And this is followed by the fifth chemical called caustic soda. The sixth chemical is vitamin E. And the seventh chemical is color. The eighth chemical is formalin. And the ninth chemical is perfume. Now let's go through the quantity of materials needed to produce about 5 liters of hair shampoo. Nitrosol 60 gram. Soda ash light 200 gram. Sulfonic acid 250 ml. Foaming booster 250 ml. Caustic soda 50 gram. Vitamin E 30 ml. Color 5 gram, formalin 20 ml and perfume 40 ml. Now let me show you these chemicals one by one and then we go into the mixing properly. Now this is nitrosol. And this is soda ash light. Here we are using soda ash light, but not soda ash dense. We are using soda ash light. And this is sulfonic acid. This is foaming booster. This is caustic soda. And this is vitamin E. This is the color we're going to use. This is formalin. And this is perfume. So these are the list of chemicals we're going to be using in this production. The next thing we're going to do is to measure some volume of water into a container. The total volume of shampoo we're going to be producing here is 5 liters. So we're going to add water to the volume of just 5 liters. This means that all the volume of water we're going to be using shouldn't be more than 5 liters. So now we're going to add nitrosol to the water. Please when adding nitrosol, add it gently, bit by bit, and at the same time stir very well. This is to ensure that it doesn't form lumps or seed in the solution of nitrosol. As you are adding, keep stirring and stir very hard. Keep adding and keep stirring at the same time until the solution becomes very thick depending on the kind of nitrosol you are using. Now the kind of nitrosol that I'm using here is a type that as you keep adding it gets thicker and thicker. The more you add the more thicker it becomes. But there are other forms of nitrosol that does not behave like this. If this is the type you have, as you keep adding, it keeps getting thicker and thicker. When I get the kind of thickness that I want, then I have to stop adding. Make sure you stir very hard so that lumps are not formed. As you can see, it's very, very thick now. That's how it should be, and that's how I want it. But in the case of yours, if it is not as thick as this, don't worry. This depends on the kind of nitrosol you're using. 
Even if it is not as thick as this, don't worry, just go ahead with the preparation, okay? Now we're going to dissolve the soda ash light. Just like I said earlier, we are using soda ash light here, not soda ash dense. Now the difference between soda ash light and soda ash dense is that soda ash light particles um, are finer than the soda ash dense. Okay, we are dissolving the soda ash light. Now, as you can see, the particles are very fine compared to the particles of soda ash dense. Make sure that all the particles are properly dissolved before you add it to the nitrosol solution. Alright, now we'll transfer the solution into the nitrosol solution. As you keep adding the soda ash light, keep stirring the overall solution of the nitrosol and the soda ash light. Alright, the next solution we're going to add to it is sulfonic acid. We're going to add sulfonic acid to it now. As you can see, very aggressive forms are formed, so we need enough space to be able to stir. So we have to transfer the solution to a bigger container. We will now transfer the solution to a much bigger container so that we have enough space to stir the solution. Alright, here we have a solution of nitrosol, soda ash light and sulfonic acid. So these are the three chemicals we have in here. Nitrosol, soda ash light and sulfonic acid have already gone into the solution. That's what we're stirring now. So the next chemical we're going to add to this formulation is foaming booster. Foaming booster is what we are adding to it now. Make sure you stir properly in order to have a homogeneous solution.
and now we're going to add caustic soda to it. So first and foremost, dissolve the caustic soda in water in another container before you pour the solution of the caustic soda into the final shampoo solution. Just like we did in the case of soda ash light, this is to avoid lumps being formed. Now we are adding caustic soda. The next solution we're going to add to it is vitamin E. Vitamin E is what we're adding now. Now we're going to add color to it. This is the color we're going to use. This is the color we're using here. Our shampoo is almost ready as you can see. And now we're going to add formalin to it. Formalin is used as preservative here. Our shampoo is almost ready. We have only one more chemical to add to it and that is perfume. Now we're going to add perfume to it. Perfume add fragrance to your shampoo. As you can see, our shampoo is ready for use. So thank you very much for watching and God bless you. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching.